So if you're trying to learn a foreign language by yourself, it can obviously be very difficult and you can feel very discouraged at times. But there are five tips that I found that really help me in progressing when I'm studying a language by myself. So here they are. So tip number one, and in my opinion, one of the most important tips is that the environment in which you study is everything. The place you choose to study will make or break your study habits and your ability to concentrate when you're studying. So in my personal experience, I know a lot of people like to study in places where they're comfortable, you know, perhaps their bedroom, uh, their favorite cafe, something like that. And you know, don't get me wrong, those are great locations and I'm sure you can succeed there. But from personal experience, I don't understand how anybody can focus in those locations. So first let's kind of discuss, you know, the bedroom or the at-home location. So if I go into my bedroom, it's usually either to sleep or just to kind of chill or hang out and just relax and unwind, right? But then the problem lies in the fact that you're adding in studying into that environment. So the studying that you do, which requires deep concentration, thought, it's difficult, that will clash with that environment that you're in. So if you're in your bedroom, more often than not, you're going to want to resort to the state of just chilling, oh, everything's good. But that affects your studying. Because the moment something gets difficult, or the moment you get off track when you're studying, you will immediately resort back to whatever you would normally do in your room. Sometimes I catch myself grabbing my phone unconsciously, just, just if I'm studying in my room, I'll pick it up and I, I'll just be using it. I don't even realize I'm doing it until 10 minutes later. And by that point in time, I'm so thrown off on my studying, I don't even remember where I was or what I was doing. And it takes me another 15 minutes to kind of get back into the groove, so to speak. And in the case of coffee shops or places like that, that's great, but you just have to be careful of the noise level because that can quickly take you out of your zone that you're in when you're studying. So a few key things. So the first part of this tip is that you want to find a new location that you can designate as your study zone. So that's not to say you can't do anything else here, but it should be primarily for studying. Now, I don't know the psychology behind this, but in my case, it's helped me immensely stay focused when I'm studying because I go to that zone or that location strictly for studying. So let me give you an example. I have a quiet local library that I like to go to where there's a bunch of tables and chairs up on the second floor, barely anybody up there, you know, no noise and it's just, there's no, there's no distractions besides some shelves of books. It's a great location for me to study because it's boring. And I know you're saying, oh, boring, that's, that's, why would I want a boring location? No, no, that's exactly what you want because you will accomplish so much more if you're in a location like that, because all your attention will be focused on the studying. Now, if you wanna see even more benefit, you can do something else, which is eliminate number two, distractions. Yes, number two is eliminate distractions while you are studying. And I know this kind of ties in with the first one, but this kills people when they're studying. This ruins people's motivation and it completely ruins study sessions. Okay, so obvious distraction first. You're probably already thinking about it. Phone. I don't know if I can truly comprehend how much study time my phone has taken away from me. And the problem is social media networks are so addictive that it's so easy to be pulled into that constant feedback loop of, oh, let me check Instagram. Oh. Now I go to TikTok, Ooh, but what about Snapchat? So my best tip in this case is to obviously mute the phone and leave it in a bag zipped up if possible, or just leave it slightly away from your person so it's not easy to access. And I totally get it if you have emergencies or you need to be able to be in constant contact with people, that's fine. But the less access you have to your phone while studying, the better. And to be honest, that's why I'm not really a big fan of just using apps to study. There are some great apps, but the problem is it's so easy to immediately swipe up from the app and just go back to what you were doing if you get even the slightest bit bored or you find something difficult. So we've eliminated the phone off the list. What else can we do? So like I said in the last tip, noise is a huge distraction when you're studying and it can quickly take you out of that studying mindset. And that's exactly why I opt for environments where it's quiet because I can focus better. So we've gotten a quiet environment, we've gotten rid of our phone, what else can we do? I think one thing most people don't even really consider is that the computer you might be studying on is also one of the biggest distractions. That's especially the case for me where I have League of Legends a click away or I can go watch One Piece in two seconds. And that's kind of the blessing and the curse of the modern era is that we have all this information at our fingertips, but we can't even stay focused to take advantage of it. So the biggest takeaway here is essentially eliminate as many distractions as you can while you're studying and you will see that you are able to study much more in a shorter amount of time. 
So if you're studying by yourself, this is the third tip, you have to be practicing with native speakers or other people in addition to your studies. And a lot of people say, oh, well, I, I don't know what to say. I just, I don't know that much yet. That's okay. You can practice the pronunciation. You can have the native speaker teach you a phrase or a word and practice that pronunciation. There's a lot you can do with it. But now you're probably thinking, okay, Ryan, Ryan, wait, hold on, hold on. How am I supposed to find a native speaker? Well, the good thing is there's actually a lot of ways to do this. So there's apps and there's games that I've used in the past that are incredible for this. So for example, when I first started studying Chinese, I was using PUBG to practice with Chinese native speakers while playing PUBG. And yes, I learned a lot of bad words and things of that sort, but it was actually super beneficial for me because I had to think on my feet, think on my feet, think, think on my toes. I had to really focus and be tuned into what was going on so that I could use the phrases that I had learned in practice. And so you might've realized by now, oh, well, this is a very active form of studying or an active form of practicing where you're actually involved in speaking with somebody and it's kind of a real conversation going on. And that is where I think you can see so much progress and gain so much confidence. And the reason why is because when you get into an actual conversation with a native speaker in real life, for example, the word that you had practiced so many times before is readily available for you to use. And I think this is kind of where a lot of people struggle. You passively study by watching movies or just reading textbooks, but you're not really writing anything down or engaging in any meaningful way. So it doesn't stick. But when you force yourself out of your comfort zone and you find native speakers to talk to and become friends with them, it builds your confidence so much. So that way when you actually meet people, like I said, it's so easy to speak with them. So a few methods you could meet native speakers. Uh, there's a lot of great apps. I like to use HelloTalk. Obviously there's games as well. VR chat is great for practicing with native speakers. There are dedicated language servers on VR chat and you don't need VR for that. Obviously, I use PUBG for Chinese, and that's another option, but that game is very poorly optimized in my opinion. And something I use all the time to practice my languages is Omegle or OmeTV. So all of those resources are excellent for practicing, and you can meet a lot of native speakers very easily on there. So to summarize tip number three, you basically want to try and meet native speakers if possible, and practice with them as a part of your routine to help build your confidence. So really quick, right before we get into tip number four, I did create a new blog style website where I post all my language tips. And the good thing is it's completely free. And like, I'm not just saying that, like not in my garage with a Lamborghini behind me trying to sell you something like seriously, like go check it out. So I'll just put that right here. That is ryanslanguagetips.com. Check it out. You will not regret it. So tip number four is also another very important tip, and that is watch media content in the target language to help you stay motivated and also gain a better understanding of the language. So one thing I found when I kind of watch videos in my target language in my free time is that it really does help me stay more motivated and inspire me, which is huge when you're learning by yourself. If you have the ability to learn in a classroom environment or you're studying a language in school, it's so much easier to stay motivated because you have all these people around you that are also studying the language and you have the teacher who's giving you, you know, positive reinforcement, hopefully. So when you study by yourself, those videos you watch in the target language in your free time give you that inspiration to keep going. They give you that motivation. And that's because you're getting immersed in the language that you really want to learn and you get to see people speaking it in real time and that at least gets me like really hyped and another kind of hidden benefit of this too is if you're watching videos where people are speaking the target language you're unknowingly gaining the ability to listen to the language better so you're kind of hearing these certain sounds that you might not hear in your mother tongue and maybe the cadence or the speed at which people speak is different in the target language too but that's all great practice for you so, you know, you can watch YouTube, you can watch movies, you can listen to music. There's a ton of stuff you can do to get that practice and that inspiration. Now, the fifth and final tip, it kind of ties in with the fourth one. So as you know, by choosing to watch this video, studying a language by yourself is not an easy task at all. And I really just want to commend you for taking the effort and the time to study another language and learn about a different culture as a result. Now, everybody kind of has different reasons why they want to study a language, but the most important thing is to keep the end goal in mind. And that's tip number five. When you're studying a language, you have to keep the end goal in mind. What do you want to become by studying this language? What do you want to do with this language? I always thought it would be super awesome to be able to speak Mandarin. And as I studied, I constantly in my head 
envisioned me speaking fluently with people in Mandarin, and that gave me so much inspiration to keep going every day. So whatever language you're deciding to learn, always remember the reasons for why you're studying and envision in your own mind the end goal. So imagine yourself in a country where that language is spoken, talking with native speakers, laughing, having a great time, and just being so happy that you put the work in to learn that language, and now you can connect with all these different people across the world. So if you only know one word right now, that's fine. Just remember the end goal, and know that if you learn another word tomorrow, you'll be one step closer to achieving your goal of speaking that language. So I want to say thank you everybody so much for watching this video. Please comment below if these tips were helpful or if you want to see more videos kind of like this in the future. And with that, I will see you in the next video.